Hey, how you doing? This is Eric from Advanced Level Auto, and on today's video, we got this 2005 Lincoln LS. So the issue with this Lincoln is that it has a no-star condition. So on today's video, what we're gonna try to do, we're gonna try to see if we can- Hey, it's you ah, again. Damn it! Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Right behind me, I have a 2005 Lincoln LS. It's got the V8 3.9 liter, and customer complaint is that it's no start. It cranks, but it doesn't start. Customer says that whenever he gets in the vehicle to go start it up, it blows a fuse. What fuse? I'm not really sure. He didn't tell me. Uh, they just had the vehicle towed over here, so getting ready to take a look at it. Dude, get out of my shop, man. Anyways, guys, on a more serious note, I want to introduce to you my guest. You guys don't know who this is? He must be living under a rock. Welcome Oz from Oz Mechanics. He's gonna help me out today. We're gonna try to figure out what's wrong with this car. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first off, we're gonna get inside the vehicle and we're gonna see whether or not it starts up. All right, so we get our key right here. We're gonna see what goes on. Let's crank this engine over. Engine cranks, it does not start. Now we can probably look for a couple different things. Uh, first thing we can look for is maybe a check engine light that comes on yeah, or I think Oz just pointed yeah, that out. So that out right <laughs> that's kind of a dead giveaway. So anyways, before we move over to that, if we look on the instrument cluster, a couple things we can look for is maybe an RPM signal, though I don't think Ford uh, really generates an RPM signal until it starts up. So we may not see the RPM needle jumping, but uh, we do see a check engine light. So that's an indication that the computer is at least somewhat communicating. Now we do have some messages over here. What did it say? Check yeah. advanced track, uh, gear select data error. And I saw this nice one right here. It was driver door jar, of course. ECT, right there. ECT engine fail safe mode. So that's a real big clue there. And plus we have the security light flashing over there. So I think first things first, let's go ahead and hook up a scan tool and see what we can find. He looks so excited right now. Look at him. Yay. <laughs> it's currently what? Six o'clock, six thirty. Yeah, it's pretty dark outside. Yeah, it's dark outside. And it's all my fault because I kind of showed up late. All right, guys. So we got the scan tool hooked up, and some of you guys remember this prehistoric animal. It's called the Solus Pro. And uh, yeah, I just decided to bring this thing out. Haven't used it in a while. So, anyways, let's go ahead and see if we have any codes stored. Engine control module. Go to the codes menu. Let's check for memory codes. No communication. Okay, um, well, at this point, we know that we have a check engine light that's illuminated, but we still don't have any communication with the scan tool. So is it possible that we could be missing maybe one of the power feeds to the engine control module? Uh, because you guys have to remember that the engine control module normally has more than one power feed, so we could be missing a power feed that's uh, supposed to be powering up a certain part of the ECM, and that's just not happening. So um, the customer did say that he had a blown fuse. He didn't tell me which fuse, so I think what we're gonna do next is probably go ahead and check all the fuses and see if we can find the blown one. Get it. All right, guys, so moving over to the trunk, we already went ahead and removed the uh, trunk liner, and we did find a fuse box back here. There's also one inside the vehicle, and there's one under the hood, so there's plenty of fuses to check. I mean, we can come down here, and uh, if I pop open the uh, fuse box, you'll see that we have multiple fuses here. I guess we can start by checking these. Let me go ahead and grab a test light. You know when you lose a 10 millimeter uh, socket? That's the face of the man right there. Dude, looking for a shit <laughs> Oh, I found it. <laughs> I had it somewhere. All right, so I got a test light right here. I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to battery negative. Then I'm just gonna go poke in these fuses and we're gonna see which one is blown. We're just kind of going down the line of these fuses. So far, so good. Yeah, so pretty much all these fuses are... 
Yeah, so pretty much all. <laughs> all right, so pretty much all these fuses right here are good. Seriously. Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second before. Damn, I had a feeling it was gonna happen like that. All right, ready? <clears throat> all right, so now we know all these fuses up here are good. Uh, we do have these JK fuses right here. Um, these have little windows so we can see through them. And just visually checking them, I don't see any that look like they're blown. No, I really can't see any blown fuses, so I don't see anything back here. Let's go ahead and move to the fuse box under the hood, and we'll see if we have any in there. All right, so we found the fuse box that's under the hood, and we got Oz over here going to do a quick fuse check. So right now what we're going to do, we're going to hook up our test light to a proper ground and just to verify that this is working, I have this to the engine and then we're just gonna check this out. So as we can see, test lights working. lighting. Now let's go through these. We have a couple of them right here, so it shouldn't take too long at all. What the heck is this? <laughs> what? Oh dude, what is dude, that? Check that out right here. No oh, shit. Pull that sucker out. I can't, my fingers, hold on. All right, hold up. Let me see if there's if this is even working here. All right. All right, we don't have any power here, but let me get... Dude, I've seen this before. It looks like somebody put a piece of copper wire and jumped that fuse. <laughs> Ow! Dude, check that sucker out. Why do people do this, man? This is how you start fires. Can you see that piece of copper strand they used to jump that fuse? Yep. That's a good way to catch your car on fire, so... All right, now what we should do... Let's verify that actually one side is working. One leg. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like we have power on either side. Let me just look at these JK's fuses while we're here too. Make sure none of them look like they're blown. That one's got a little broken window, but that's no big deal. And yeah, fun, all these look good. Fun fact, you know why they call them JK fuses? Why is that? Just kidding fuses. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna get a wiring diagram. We're gonna see what fuse this is. This looks like a number six fuse. Let's get this wiring diagram, see what we can find out. Sounds good. All right, guys, so we're over here at the computer, and I've got the wiring diagram pulled up, and we've already located fuse number six, which is this 15 amp fuse right here. And let me show you where that power feed comes from for the fuse. So if we highlight this wire, you'll see it goes to number two, which comes from the first page of the diagram. So we'll go ahead and go back to the first page. It's a green and red wire. Let me zoom in here number two green and red so we'll follow this back over here all right so as you guys can see the power actually comes from this relay which is the pcm power relay that's located uh, in the junction box that's in the right front of the engine compartment now we can go here and check this relay but i think one of the other things we should probably check is the power feed that comes from the load side of the relay so if we follow this back over here you'll see that it actually comes from this uh, fuse 31 which is a 30 amp fuse and that fuse is actually located in the battery junction box that's in the luggage compartment I think I've already checked these fuses but let's go back to the uh, fuse box in the luggage compartment and let's double check this 30 amp fuse and then if that fuse is good we'll go ahead and move over to the relay so yeah let's go ahead and move to the luggage compartment look man there's a blown fuse that I couldn't see okay I Excuse me. I'm blind, man. I'm sorry. I'm blind. Just just tell them. Just tell All them right. like it is, man. Now let's check this out. So this 30 this 30 amp fuse right here, it's gonna be this one on this corner is gonna be that second one. Yeah, with with my uh 4040 vision, I can tell you right now, this is a busted fuse. I'm just giving Eric a hard time. That's actually kind of hard to see. Yeah, man, that's hard to see. Yeah, let me let me open this up right here for y'all so y'all can have a better you look. You gotta give me credit, man. I I I couldn't see it. Look at that. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, you can see it now. Yeah, there you go. All right. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put another fuse on there. Well, we know we have a short, so yeah. And guess what? I did bring my Pulsar. He brought his Pulsar. Okay. Yeah, yeah I always take it everywhere. We got our brand new 30 amp fuse right here. And let's put that sucker in. Now, let's run to the front and let's check this out. Make sure. Now we have power. <laughs> All right, so we're in the front right now. And let's go ahead. 
verify. All right. And all I'm doing right now, I don't have the fuse in there. I just want to make sure that at least one leg has power. Maybe the key needs to be on. You know what? You're, you are right. <laughs> he might have bad vision, but I'm the one that's messing all this thing up right here. <laughs> you might need the key. All right, cool. All right, so remember, we have our ground right there. Now we just want to verify that we have power on one leg. And bam. Got it. Should we put a fuse or should we put the pole star? See what's going on. I just want to put a fuse first and, and try yeah, to. Turn we can on do that. Vehicle. I mean, I've never used the pulsar. That sounds kind of like a cool tool, but we could probably just throw a fuse in there if you want to. Fine, we'll do the pulsar. Sounds good to me. All right. All right, cool. So I have the pulsar right here. Kind of already have it hooked up, but I'm gonna let Eric. Yeah. You know, it's my with, first time. I've never used this tool. Play with my tool, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. Dude, yeah, no. why'd you do that, man? I don't know how to hook it up. All right, all right, all right. So I'm gonna to explain to this. You gotta explain to me how to use this tool. All right, so this is gonna be our ground clamp right here. And we're just gonna find a suitable ground. Can you put that on the rubber boot? Uh, no. Okay. Somebody and told me one time that there's no such thing as a dumb question, so. But that was a dumb question. Okay, what next? Another <laughs> side. This is gonna be hooked up to the actual uh, fuse right here. So you have two legs right here. Oh, that's for big fuses, and, and that's, that's for little fuses. Some other fuses, yes. So we're gonna hook this up to the fuse that busted, or the one that they actually put the copper wire right here. Wabam. And now oh. we're gonna have a reading right here. We do have the, the battery charger hooked up, so as you can see, our voltage is kind of fluctuating. But what we're gonna do right here, we're gonna hook, uh, go to the auto setting, and then we have a knob. That knob, we're gonna move it, and then we're gonna set it to 15 amps because that's what our fuse is, is a 15 amp fuse. Once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and set it by pushing down the actual knob. And there you go. We're set at 15 amps and that's when the, the actual pulsar will go, will go off if we do have a short. And this is the amperage that's actually showing at the moment. So right now we're running about 3.6 amps. Eric. Okay, to be clear, I didn't catch any of that, but I think I understand how this tool works. But right now we're seeing around four amps of current flow. Yeah. Okay. So let's see if the car starts up. I'm actually kind of curious right now. And you know what? I don't know if you can see that right now. The security lights, is, the security light is not actually, it's not blinking at all. Security lights not blinking guys. So maybe, just maybe we can start the vehicle up. Or we can try to communicate with the scan tool. Yeah. We got scan tool communication. We got that, uh, remember, we couldn't talk to the patch. We couldn't talk to the computer. We couldn't talk to anything. So we're going to get the scan tool and we're going to check this out. Let's go over there. All right, guys. So we got the scan tool connected. We're going to check for codes. All right. So let's start off in the engine. Let's see what we get right here. All right. Code menu, memory codes. Uh, memory codes, yeah. Remember, beforehand, it wasn't even working. Bam! <laughs> Check that out. EGR fault. EVAP. EVAP. Torque converter. I can't even read it. It's a bunch of little shift solenoid codes and all that. Man, this okay. is a lot of codes. Yeah, that's a lot of codes. Um, I think we should probably go back to the wiring diagram and figure out what that fuse number six powers up. And then... uh go from there yeah because this is a lot of codes right here so let's go yeah. check out the wiring diagram sounds good all right guys so moving back over to the computer again we've got the wiring diagram pulled up and if you guys remember fuse six is the fuse that was blown under the hood which was a 15 amp fuse now we're going to look at what that fuse powers so i'm going to go ahead and highlight the green wire that's coming out of that fuse box and if we go down here you'll see that it splices across right here so this is going to feed multiple circuits so let's start with this leg of the circuit we'll follow this down and if you'll see that it feeds the evap canister purge valve so this is the power feed for the evap canister purge valve 
And if we go back up, see the splice? We'll follow the splice down this way. See what else it powers up. Looks like it also powers the EVAP uh, canister vent valve. And if we go back up, there's another splice here that comes back up and you'll see that it actually powers up the uh, brake pressure switch. And then if we follow the splice over this way, you'll see that it powers up, it goes into the transmission. And this is actually the power feed for pretty much all of the solenoids that are inside the transmission, including the shift solenoid A, B, C, D, the TCC solenoid, pressure control solenoid, uh, A, C, and B. So yeah, this thing actually feeds quite a few things. Now let's go this way on the diagram. If you follow it over this way, you'll see that it goes to number five, which continues on the next diagram. So let's go ahead and move over to the next page. Follow number five, which is this wire here. And if we follow it across, it actually goes to the next page, number 11. So let's go over to the next page. Find number 11 right there. And we'll follow this down. And you'll see it feeds the EGR system module. So this is the EGR valve solenoid uh, power feed. So yeah, this, uh, this circuit actually powers up a lot of different things. And now to be honest with you, it actually makes sense because we had, what do we have, man? We had a bunch of codes. It was about 10 different codes. And we had an EGR code, I know. Yeah, EGR code, the vent code. We had the shift code. solenoid. Yeah, the transmission shift solenoid codes. So this is actually starting to make sense. I think uh, when we lose power on that fuse, then we lose power to all of those uh, circuits. So we know we have a short circuit somewhere uh, beyond that six amp fuse or the number six fuse, excuse me, which is the 15 amp fuse. So really we could have a short anywhere on the system. Now, I guess the next question is, do we have a component that is shorted or do we have a wiring problem where we have a short somewhere in the wiring? What do you think, Oz? We do have a scansel. So what we can do is see if we can do bi-directional on the- On the components. Yeah, that's components. a good idea. We can probably do a bi-directional control maybe activate the EGR solenoid. We can also, I think, activate the shift solenoids in the transmission. Uh, I'm gonna write down the solenoids that we're gonna be focusing on, and let's go ahead and move over to the vehicle, and let's go to the scantle. Hey, what? I forgot one thing. What? Let's see if the, tr uh, the vehicle turns on. We should try to start the vehicle. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that first. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move inside the vehicle, and we're gonna see if this thing starts up got the scan tool connected but we're just gonna go ahead and move this thing out of the way and I'm gonna grab the keys and oh man where are the keys hey Oz where are the keys at man Oz where are the keys at bro dude what are you doing man hey we didn't come here to like sit down and get to work man all right we're gonna verify this so Remember, we have communication with the computer now. Let's look at the security light over here. So what we want to do is just verify that it turns off after a while. Yep, there you go. Well, well it's turned off. Let me crank up the uh, battery charger first. Hold on a second, because this thing did have a low battery. So I'm just going to crank up the battery charger to uh, 200 amps there. Now, see if it starts up. All right, first of all, before you ever start this, before we even crack the vehicle over, we gotta cross our fingers, okay? So okay. here it goes. <laughs> okay, let me put the jump pack on it. What the? <laughs> What'd you do, man? You set the alarm off. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put the jump pack on it. So we put the jump pack on the battery. Charger wasn't enough, so go ahead and try to crank it. <laughs> Check that out. She's alive. That's a beastly V8 right there. That's a 3.9 liter V8. You hear that sucker? Oh man, it actually smells like it's running really rich. Look at that smoke coming out of the tailpipe. 
Oh you yeah. Turn that on again just to make sure everything's working. Make sure that the security light's turning off. Here it goes. What? Hey. It started up for a second. Try it again. What'd you do? I don't know. Let's go see what we find. All right, so uh, it's kind of crazy right here. We turned on the vehicle and it turned on, and then after that we tried to crank it again, and then you saw it on the little clip right there. It wouldn't turn on again. So we have the key on the on position right now, and we're gonna test our fuse that we did change out before. And that's working. So the fuse that blew before is good. Yeah, that one's working pretty good. There's no problem. As you can see, this is it right here. The one right next to it is not working at all. Okay, sh hold on, do that again. So light, the other side. No light. No light. So that fuse is blown. What fuse is that? It's a 15 amp fuse and that's uh, fuse number five. Let's see, let's try to take this out. Let's see what we have right here. That's the one next to the number six, which is the one that was blown to begin with. Yeah, that fuse is blown. Okay. All right, so let's put this one on there so we can see if it works. Now I'm just playing around. Don't ever do that. <laughs> Don't ever do that. Or what we can do, we can actually use our pull star right here. Like I said, I have the key on the on position. Don't blow your machine up, man. All right, so we're going to set this up to 15 amps. Let's see what happens. Oh. Well, does so that mean that, that it's right shorted? There? Yeah. Whenever it shows pulse right there, that means that it's shorted. Ah, okay. And we're getting somewhere right now. That's pretty neat. Let's go to the wiring the wire diagram and let's see what we find out on this. Uh, Sounds like a plan. All right, guys. So once again, we're back at the computer. Now, if you recall the first time we found number six fuse that was blown, which was a 15 amp fuse under the hood. Now this time, uh, fuse number five is blown, which is the one right next to it. That's also a 15 amp fuse. Uh, and this fuse feeds a lot of other components. So let's go ahead and uh, follow what components get fed by this power feed. So we're gonna follow this down here. Uh, this one goes over to the first page on number 11. So let's follow this one here. And that one feeds the mass airflow sensor Let's go back to the fuse. And let's follow this wire down. And you'll see it gets spliced off into two different components. And those components are the variable valve timing solenoids. So we have solenoid number one right here and solenoid number two right here. So both of the VVT solenoids get their power feed from this fuse. Let's go back up to the splice and highlight the other wire right here. It goes over to the next page, number one. Let's find number one right over here. As you can see, it goes over to the next page, number one. And if we follow it up, it goes to the fuel injectors. You'll see here it splices off and it is the power feed for the fuel injectors. Okay, so none of these components are really shared. Oh, there is one more leg of the circuit. If we go back to the fuse, we go back to that splice, you'll see that it also says it goes to the cooling fan system. So this may actually be the power feed for the cooling fans. So I think at this point, it's probably highly unlikely that we have a shorted component because both of these fuses are on separate circuits, so one component is not gonna take both of these fuses out. I hope that makes sense, but essentially, I think what we might have more than likely is a problem in the wiring harness. It's possible that both of these wires run through the same wiring harness and somewhere it may be touching a ground, causing a short. So I think I'm more convinced that it's probably an issue in the wiring harness, so I think the next step is to go back to the vehicle and let's probably try to do a uh, wiggle it test. We'll go ahead and probably put a test light to the uh, fuse circuit and then we'll just go across the wiring harness and we'll see if we can find a short to ground somewhere. So let's go ahead and move over to the vehicle 
and check it out. All right, guys, so moving back over to the vehicle. Now the plan of attack is we've got the Pulsar hooked up to the fuse number six circuit, and we have the test light hooked up to the fuse number five circuit. So what we're gonna do is the wiggle test, and we're basically just gonna go around the wiring harness, and we're gonna touch it, wiggle it, and we're gonna try to see if we can get the short to either come or go. So we're looking for some type of activity on either one of these components. We have the test light, and then we have the Pulsar. Again, we're looking at the two different circuits. We don't know which one's gonna short, which one's not. Well, right now, fuse number five is a direct short to ground. We know that for sure. So if we start wiggling the harness and we see that that short to ground goes away, then we know we're within the vicinity of where our short to ground is. So what do you think, Oz? The one end on the test light is actually hooked up to battery positive. So if we touch any ground, that lets us know that we have a completed circuit. Over here on the fuse box, we shouldn't have ground. But as you can tell right here, we do have ground. That's a short to ground right there. And as well, we have our pulse saw right here, which is working right now. As we can see, we have 3.6 amps going through the, flowing through there at the moment. So that's, that's not a short to ground. Yeah, so what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna do the wiggle test, all right? Exactly. Once we do the wiggle test, this just, once this shuts off, that's where we're gonna, that's gonna be our affected area. If this goes off, that's gonna be our affected area as well. So we're gonna- I get the feeling that our short to ground is gonna be in one spot where those two wires run together. And yeah, they're just probably touching something. So let's go ahead and get started. You wanna do the honors on that side? Yeah. So all you wanna do is just kinda of wiggle it around. And you wanna get areas that are touching metal. That's where our affected area is probably gonna be at. Yeah, I think we should probably try disconnecting the injectors because like I said, it does smell like it's running really rich. Maybe we have a problem with the injectors. Yeah, my side's taking off. Let me disconnect these injectors over here. One. two, three, four. All of the injectors are unplugged. We still have a short to ground somewhere. All right, one leg of the circuit is still connected. So we have the injectors, master flow sensor, which I'm just gonna disconnect. Oh. <laughs> what? Dude, seriously? <laughs> okay, so the mass airflow sensor, plug it back in, disconnect it, back in, disconnect it. I think we may have found our short to ground. Well, at least for fuse number five, why? Why did we blow fuse number six? That's a hard one to say. Or maybe- Did we ever blow fuse number six or was it already blown? No, it was already blown. There's a good chance that fuse number five was completely blown at first. They put that- uh, Yeah, that so maybe they got mixed up because, well, when we first looked at the fuse box, fuse number six was blown. And we saw that they put a piece of copper strand across it, uh, but maybe, Maybe they stuck it back into the wrong socket. Cause did we ever see a short to ground on there? Nope, not at all. And it's still working perfectly. If we look at a pulse saw right now, let's see. So about 3.9 amps. Okay. <laughs> I'm still kind of amazed that. I think we may have found our short to ground. Let's see, putting it back Plug it on. back in. Yeah, that's it right there. Off. <laughs> all right guys so let me go ahead and show you all right guys so just to show you where the mass airflow sensor is located it's right over here on the airbox we're actually going to go ahead and remove the mass airflow sensor take a look at it all right so oz is going to pull the mass airflow sensor out 
and we can take a look inside, try to get a close up. I mean, I don't see anything obviously wrong with it. Uh, it's not burned up or anything, but it's definitely shorted. There we go, guys. That's 100% proof. That mass airflow sensor is bad. It's gonna need to get replaced and that's gonna do it. All right, guys, so as you can see, we are able to find that we had a shorted mass airflow sensor. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along, us using the Pulsar, us using the test site and how we use the wiggle test. We really couldn't find anything conclusive with the wiggle test, but we started disconnecting components. Again, we disconnected the fuel injectors because we knew those were a part of the circuit. And when we got to the mass airflow sensor, Oz disconnected it and the short went away. So we now have proof, evidence, that we have a bad mass airflow sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and get one on order. We're gonna replace it and uh, get the vehicle back to the customer. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. And please, if you guys wanna see more videos from me and Mr. Oz over here, make sure you tell us in the comments section. And if you guys have any ideas for videos, let us know. Anyways, we're gonna end it off today. You got any words you wanna say, Oz? I just wanna say this was a pretty fun uh, project right here and we had a good time. Now, beer 30. It's time to crack open some beers. Ow! <laughs> Later. Go, 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 go.